I want to start things off by telling you guys a little story about my past. My father could be described as stone-faced. When he scolds me, when he praises me, he'll have the exact same face. I think I've only seen my dad with two different facial expressions in his life, one being his face and one being his face in pain. Now, as many of you know, my dad is an active member of the Virginia National Guard. And when I was nine years old, he volunteered to deploy to Afghanistan. The morning he left, he pulled me aside from everyone else, and he told me, John, you're the man of the house now. You need to be strong for your mom. Now, at the time, I didn't know exactly what he meant by that, but the way I took it was that he wanted me to stop crying. Looking back, I obviously know that's not at all what he meant, but that's how I took it at the time. So knowing that, I want to show you guys some pictures. Now, I'm not sure if you guys caught this, but one of these pictures is not quite like the others. And I'm willing to take a bet on which one you think is different. And I'm willing to take a bet on why you think it's different. Most likely, subconsciously at least, you all think that the picture of Tommy McGuire is a little bit less masculine than the other ones. Now, I'm curious as to why that is. Why do we consider a picture of a man crying to be less masculine than a picture of three other men? Scientists think that back when, before historic times, when we were just animals wandering around the planet, we went through the mating process just like any other species. And part of that process was appearing more masculine than the others, other males. Now, why didn't that change when we became civilized? We changed in almost every other way from other animals, but why didn't that change? It did, though. That's what people don't understand. During medieval times, it was considered extremely masculine to be seen crying in the streets or crying in public. It, was shown, it showed that you had your own honor and you were representing your coat of ar arms and you were strong enough to show emotion in front of other people. Well, as you all know, most likely, that's not the case today. If you saw a man crying on the street, you wouldn't say, hey, look at that guy. He looks really strong. No, you'd be like, get over it. Are any of you familiar with Andrea Bocelli? That makes sense because he's an Italian opera singer. When he was asked what his opinion on crying was, he responded with, I don't like crying. I'm a country boy, and we're the product of upbringing. As a boy, I was told that men don't cry. But Shelley is one of millions of boys who were told that when they're growing up. He had it so bad that when he was 12 years old and he got, had a concussion, he lost his eyesight and he never shed a tear. Now, I want to go back to the picture. Wait, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now, I want to talk for a second about comic books. This might be kind of odd for you guys, but comic books show this example, too, of boys don't like crying. Batman is a very, very, very popular comic book character, comic book hero, in today's society, especially with younger boys. I went around the school, and I asked 25 guys who their favorite superhero was between Batman and Superman. I came back with 21 votes for Batman and four for Superman. When I asked them why that is, those who chose Batman, they told me that Batman was just a cooler character. And I asked them why, as opposed to Superman, and they told me that Superman is too emotional when he fights. I asked for a detail, and have any of you seen the movie Man of Steel? Yeah? Um, when Superman is forced to kill General Zod, he breaks down and starts crying. When I asked why that bothered them, they said, well, he had to kill him. He had no choice. Why, what was the point in crying? Superman is too emotional to be liked by everyone. Now, I want to go back to the pictures I showed you. The three of the pictures, exclu and excluding Tobey Maguire, are the pictures of the media's perfect badass. Part of this description is that throughout the movies, they show no emotion, and they don't cry. Now, many of you may be thinking to yourselves, well, I mean, they can cry if they want. I don't care. But let's all be real for a second. If Bruce Willis broke down halfway through Die Hard and started bawling, 
you'd find that kind of strange. He'd appear much less of an action hero, more of a wuss. Whether you want to believe that or not or accept that or not, you would think that. Now, my talk was going to be about how men don't cry anymore in society, but I think that's too broad of a topic. Right now in today's society, women are being paid less than men in the workplace. This is a serious issue, and it's one of many that women are still facing today. And that definitely needs to be addressed, and I'm happy that's being addressed. However, with all the attention women are getting in society, men have kind of been forgotten. And somehow, over the past years, men have become hardened in society without anyone noticing. They've become too strong. They carry too much weight on their shoulders. And they're scared to ask for help. So I'm urging you guys, guys in the audience, guys who are hearing this, it's OK to let go sometimes. It's OK to have other people help you with your problems. It's OK if you ever need to break down and cry sometimes. My name is John Booker, and I was raised in a society that taught me not to cry. Thank you. <laughs>